Hello, sir. So, as part of uh, our uh, ongoing events uh, during uh, this uh, COVID situation, so we are conducting several uh, webinars, several webinars on different topics. And uh, it goes every month, at least one or two different items we are talking about. And uh, this is one of the new area we are venturing in. When I say we are venturing in, in the sense, uh, we initially targeted our youths. As you see, we have a, a lot of youths here in this uh, meeting today. They are present here who we have seen, like, you know, be it uh, Lucky, be it Ini, be it uh, Chandan. I have seen them like, you know, when they were in, uh, you know, two years or three years old or maybe you know, around that age group. So they have grown and they have become kind of a member today. Like when their parents were a member one day, I mean, they're still member, but uh, today they are big enough to become or eligible to become a member. So we wanted them to involved in our community to take, uh, you know, carry this torch of this, uh, you know, the uh, generations which uh, started this Canosa uh, several years ago. So one day we will go and they will take over. So how to involve them, uh, how to get engage them in uh, Canosa activities, uh, you know, several thoughts was coming into our mind. By the way, the only reason I'm talking in English is today is I know most of us are Oriyas, but we have uh, a guest who is going to talk and you know, she is uh, not an Oriya. So uh, our program today will be in English, Hindi, as well as uh, in Oriya. And uh, most, again, our second generation, uh, you know, children, they are also, they are born brought up here and, you know, they are more comfortable in English. So primarily discussions will be in English, but then, uh, you know, Oriya or Hindi is also okay. So, I was just trying to say is so we uh, our aim is to get our uh, you know young generation uh, you know involved in Kanosa activities, and what we thought is like we have several uh, you know programs in our mind, but uh, considering uh, in a few factors, we thought we'll start with one which is today's event. As you know, the topic itself is self-explanatory. We thought like you know our young generation they are going to go to the job market very soon. When I say very soon, in the sense those who are college pass out or you know high school pass out, they will go to the you know job market very soon. Or we have on the other side also, we have several new immigrants who have moved from India or from any other country to Canada, and they are there is a disbalance between you know the work culture there as well as the work culture over here. So this is a small attempt to see how we can help uh, you know those people. Whatever we are going to tell here today uh, is uh, purely our views or the, uh, the speaker's views. So it's not absolute, uh, you know, that we are not recommending you, you know, uh, to go by a book on that. I mean, to go by line by line on that. You have to judge yourself. Like you have to take the best things. You think something doesn't make sense. It's up to you. Basically, my point is, it's up to you. So Canosa is no way going to be responsible saying that, hey, we made, a, you know, you guys made this uh, webinar and you told us to do this thing and we did it and this is what has happened. No, we are not responsible for that. You, you have to judge yourself. And uh, the other thing is also we want to do it on a monthly basis. Every month we want to do this, some sorts of this program, but this requires your feedback. When I say your feedback, because this uh, career development or you know any kind of advice and all thing, we have a lot of professionals. As you heard, like you know, I just uh, you know a couple of minutes back, I told one of our uh, today's attendees, Sovan Sau. Uh, Sovan Sau is a very well established person, and uh, you know uh, one of the days we will also invite him. Uh, his son is like you know is in grade eleven. Uh, you know he's uh, also going to be passed out in uh, from school very soon, so. We have a lot of resources. We have people who are, uh, you know, hiring managers who are uh, doing very good in their respective job field. So they can give you some sorts of tips. What uh, will happen when you go to a job market or, uh, you know, what kind of uh, qualities uh, your prospective employer is looking at you. So then what will happen is you can prepare yourself and then your job, uh, you know, interview will go comparatively easier than somebody who doesn't know it. Now, when we came here, nobody taught us. 
nobody taught us how to do this thing so it's all trial and error we did it and today whatever we have achieved or whatever we are like in wherever we are in we, it's based on our own individual effort so nobody gave us a helping and we didn't had any godfather we didn't had any godfather to help us out now what i'm trying to say is our community has the resources our community has the resources we are willing to as, as the community leader we are willing to help but you have to take that initial one step you have to come as approach us saying that hey uncle i need help do you know somebody in this field do you know somebody in the supply management do you know somebody in the sales line do you know some somebody in the in a mechanical engineering line do you know somebody in human resource line so if you tell us then what will happen is we will work for you or we will try to hook you up with somebody who is in our field or who is going to help you out the other thing we are going to do is we we have a lot of contacts in the industry they are not necessarily from our community like how we have uh, brought priyanka priyanka is a gold medalist from uh, you know calcutta university on human resources but we have uh, like you know um, people who are actually human resource manager or who are the hiring manager in industries and we know because they are our colleagues or we know them because of you know our business we know them we can invite them but question is when we invite them and we are presenting our community to them saying that hey we are a small community uh, please come and you know uh, talk about how, what you are looking in a new employee so when they come here and they don't find any interest or they don't find there is not enough seriousness is not there you know it's only not only uh, you know you got to we got we want you to be involved in uh, you know in our uh, you know canosa board and uh, come out with suggestions and form a group i'm talking about the youth form a group i know some of you have a group you are part of a group but you know form all the you know young kids form a group and come and tell us uncle we are interested aunty we are interested in this thing then what will happen it will also motivate us to go and bring people there is absolutely no cost there is nothing that we are here to help we want to help but then we want you to do some part also you we want you to take the initial initiative having said that i'm not uh, you know dragging on more today's uh, program we have two speakers uh, we have one of our own kanosa member mr samait mahanti i'm not going to introduce him uh, like you know, someone else is going to do um, and we have uh, priyanka roy berman who is also another invited guest for us so uh this program will be moderated by two of our you know kanosa members one is uh, kamala kant kamala kant uh, will uh, you know moderate as well. i mean take your questions or he will ask the questions to uh, you know the guest and as well as we have bibhuma patra who is also going to do the moderation part now these two gentlemen or they will ask question they or uh, you know the speaker will speak you know uh, they will take your questions so the first half the first half of the program is going to you know general discussion about uh, you know what we are going to talk again as i said it's not it's a huge huge subject today is a more of a general interactive uh, you know discussion and uh, if things goes well and if we find more interest then uh, what will happen is we will uh, you know carry forward with similar programs in future months so uh, that been the case i'm handing over uh, you know the stage or uh, the <laughs> webinar to bibhu and kk to you know take the things and they will take all your questions and i ask first kk to come in and tell few you know uh, ground rules here and from there uh, you know we can move forward okay again welcome and namaskar thank you kanosa president vaina <laughs> so that's a lovely thing so as uh, amit vaina says so this is just an informational session this is not at all a job posting or a job referral nothing like that but will definitely help in different sense but i think the core motive of this program is to provide you know the career development what is the challenges or the newcomer what they face how they can overcome those kind of things so as soon as we start this session so what we, i would like everybody like they can mute themselves and if they have any question that there, there are two options if they don't want to ask themselves they can write it down in the chat box or they can send it to me directly so that i can put forward towards the end of this uh, session right and second thing if they want to ask themselves 
uh, you know, definitely we can allow them, but not to all. So they can raise the hand towards the end of this session. First of all, let's hear whatever the session goes through, how the session goes through. And there is a raise button, you know, I, I guess everybody knows about how to use the raise hand button in the uh, Zoom option, right? So they can raise the edge and we can see like who I can note it down, you know, whoever, you know, trying to ask question or, you know, have any clarification needed, then I can, you know, sequence it and then we can go ahead with that. So probably I would uh, request everybody to go on mute and on, because this is, even though it is controlled by us, but, you know, anytime anybody can unmute, it's very open discussion webinar. It's not exactly the uh, mute all or listen all webinar. It's interactive, uh, you know, session. So I would urge everybody to you know mute themselves and you know whenever the session going on. And uh, uh, okay, let's start with the session. So I'll hand over to our Bibu uh, Bhai to you know go forward uh, with the session. Just one question, one information here, KK, for you know some of the you know little knowledge on the computer side, uh, mm -hmm. how to raise hand if you see at the bottom, you know you have this mute stops, you know stop exactly. There is one area where it, uh, there is one button which says a reaction. So if you click onto that reaction, it will give raise you a, a raise hand or a claps or thumbs up or crying. Or like a lot of symbols are there. So mm -hmm. if you click on to that, you can, it will show us that, you know, you have a question and it is raising the hand. Just thought of that. Thank you. No, that's good. That's a good point. Yeah. Like that's the way we can do our raise hand. And there is always chat box is open. You can, you know, always, uh, you know, just put your questions or, you know, concerns, or, you know, you're asking something in between the session, better to put it in the uh, you know, chat note so that we can keep a track of that. Okay. Over to Bhai. Thank you, KK. Thank you. Thank you, Amit Bhai. Okay, first of all, thank you all for joining. Um, I was honestly a very worried that, okay, weather was getting warm and it was really gorgeous outside. So I thought, okay, maybe many people won't join, but yeah. So thanks nonetheless. And uh, I'm sure that by the end of it all, you'd have learned something useful. Um, or at the least, you'd be able to network with some of the attendees here who will be definitely helpful down the line. And, and this is extremely key for career progression in Canada. Uh, Amit Bhai rightly, at a high level, he mentioned the agenda. I'll just quickly go over the same. Uh, KK and I will moderate. We'll just introduce the guests before that and uh, who have actually agreed to spend a Sunday evening with us. So thanks to both of them. Uh, KK has already gone over the housekeeping stuff, and that's really important for us, that online uh, meeting etiquettes to keep the uh, meeting flow. Um, and then for the next 45 minutes or so, KK and I will be coordinating the moderating the event, we'll be asking questions to, the, to both the attendees to be more of a discussion rather than a uh, back and forth um, um, uh, questionnaire. Then eventually at the end of it, we'll open the floor for questions. Um, KK will be collecting questions, as he said, you can definitely raise your hands or any of the emotions that you see there, or you can message the questions to KK and he can, or maybe we both can consolidate and ask, present it to the speakers later. So we could close to 5.30. So instead of delaying any further, let me introduce our first guest, um, Mr. Samvit Mahanti. Um, so one of my mentors and really well wishes described Samvit as a great colleague and a leader. So, and that, that actually means a lot to me. Uh, so Mr. Samvit Manth is one of the senior execs of Tech Mahindra. Um, he's responsible for IT services delivery for the top three Canadian banks, and he, they have a strong footprint across North America. He's instrumental in TechM's about 2x growth in banking and financial services sector in the last four years. He's responsible for setting up a new shore of the location, the business process services location in Eastern Canada in Moncton. And that's a great achievement because most of the Clients are looking for near shore locations and having an office there uh, is really phenomenal. Uh, in the current capacity, he's a portfolio and global de delivery head uh, for all the B uh, BFS accounts for business, uh, for, uh, uh, banking and financial services sector accounts for tech uh, In his illustrious career of spanning over two decades, um, he's involved in playing various leadership roles, um, driving several digital transformation initiatives for many Fortune 500 clients that he has. Uh, from sales and business development to even to account growth. Uh, he has a, a BTEC and also an MBA from uh, in tech, uh, tech management from Osmania University. Apart from all the professional successes, um, he's also an advisory panel member and you can hear him at several conferences for quality tech and assurance events. 
He's also part of many startup cultures in early uh, 2000, uh, instrumental in developing an auto enhancer tool for a company called Peritas Lab. So that was quite uh, successful there. And when he's not helping, uh, busy helping his clients, he loves playing cricket. So he should know about the ODI uh, league that we have, KK. You should maybe talk to him about that. Uh, loves to travel and uh, he's also a blue belt in uh, Taekwondo. So that's an interesting achievement. He's also a co-founding member of um, Orissa Puja Committee, so stayed close to his home uh, in Bangalore, J uh, Jagannath Temple and honorary president of uh, Orissa Puja Committee in Hyderabad as well. So uh, welcome, Mr. Samrit. And just, I wanted to add, I'm a proud Satyamite myself. I don't know if you call Satyamite Satyamites because that was 10 years back. I've really fond memories of the, my tenure there. So thank you for agreeing to join us. Thank you, Vibhu, thank you. It is now called Tech Mighty. Take okay. mighty, interesting. Okay, okay. Uh, KK, why don't you go ahead and introduce our HR gold medalist next? Maybe you can definitely. Thank you, uh, thank you, uh, you guys. So the next uh, guest for us, uh, I would say, like, let me go through her the career background as such. This long list as such also, <laughs> even though she is young, and uh, so she has a bachelor's in accounting and finance. Then also a dual specialization in, uh, you know, master's in dual specialization, HR and marketing. I don't know, like, you know, how that can be achieved, you know, two times, two specialization at one time. That's a good achievement, I can say. And the biggest thing is that she's a gold medalist in from Calcutta University in MBA. So that is quite interesting. And this is, you know, you know, I can say like, you know, mostly people, they normally get passed out, you know, but but somebody with gold medal have definitely something extra or extraordinary than the normal people, right, as such. So she's been working, you know, many other fields such as recruiting processes, general literature, conflict resolution, client relation, business process, lead. So I don't know, like a lot of things. <laughs> so, uh, and uh, worked with many MNCs across the globe, I guess. And mostly she has been working with many clients over Europe and North America. And currently she's working as a market leader in the field of medical anesthetic uh, across North America. And the concept is called Venus concept and she's into a critical operation role, right? So uh, there are a lot of things, I guess from this field you can get to know from her because few of the things also, I don't know what is the exact you know, working behavior, what is the working model of that? Because being a YT ID background, I know simple things that just code, <laughs> do a coding. But you know, having a variety of background will definitely get a lot of things. Even you know, got to know that what are these things also, right? <laughs> so uh, definitely, it's a welcoming. Uh, uh, you know, you can say like you know, career growth over here, and we can definitely get to know from her much about this background things, right? Thank you so much, KK. I would just say I'm I'm so overwhelmed with this introduction. <laughs> It's a pleasure to be a part of it. Thank you. Uh, can people who are not, spe uh, not speaking go on mute, please? It's just that will help. Thank you. Uh, so, yeah, we'll just go ahead with the discussion. First. So, maybe we'll start with um, Samoyed Bhai. You came to Canada, what, maybe nine, ten years back, and uh, you've been in leadership roles in India and now in Canada. So, something comes to my mind like, uh, can you elaborate on some of the behavioral differences that you notice in uh, tech mighties uh, who are working in India versus working in Canada? Uh, maybe the communication skills or any other behavioral attributes that you see is a major difference. Uh, sure, Bibu. Uh, just to correct, I am still, I'm going to complete five years. I've been here from 2016, December. But that is certainly a very good question to start our conversation this evening, Bibu. But before we get into the details, I would like to thank you, uh, Mitobu, KK, Sonia, and the entire team behind this initiative. This is something I think uh, very important for a new immigrant, uh, uh, for a new immigrant, as well as somebody who wants to build a career in Canada. And uh, I must say, whatever we are going to discuss this evening comes straight from the learning, as Amitabh rightly said that there is no forum, there is no hand-holding for all of us when we migrated to Canada. Uh, so it is all self-learning as a business leader. I have been for the last five years. But coming back to your question, what are the typical behavioral differences I have noticed in 
Techem employees working in India and uh, Techem uh, um, employees working in Canada. For that matter, I would not relate Techem as such, but it can be extended to, you know, overall, uh, you know, Chalta hai Indian mindset, right? So broadly, if you look at, uh, there are three categories uh, of behavioral difference I could relate. Uh, the first one could be uh, the adaptability, two could be flexibility, and three could be communication. So when it comes to adaptability, I've seen a huge gap here. People continue to look at the rear mirror even after being here in Canada for years together. You know, we know our love for cricket, we know our love for spicy food, but we continue to also exhibit our poor work ethics around, poor dressing sense to say, even if, you know, after, you know, years together, as I said, people come late into the, late to the meetings. I've seen people wearing black belt, brown suits, or, you know, to that matter, white sports socks, clearly visible to everybody uh, for the formal meetings. And to some extent also, you know, you know, even missing basic hygiene after being in Canada. I will give an example. In a couple of years back, uh, you know, I had been called by Scotia Bank director to the issue that reported about the guys who, you know, who smells odd, who are smelling odd and the impact on the entire team. These are the sort of things is definitely somebody will not be able to teach you. And to that matter also, you know, I'm sure all of you must have come across. I have received few customer complaints from clients, uh, you know, that your team is using local languages in common meetings, loudly, you know, over phone in corridors. Those are the few things, these are trait typically you'll find what we think that is normal in India. And even if just to example, give an example, in India, what happens when you greet somebody in the morning or in the afternoon, one or two times, then we, we, we do not uh, you know, even care to say hi or hello when you're crossing in the corridor. But what we do over here is even if the same guy, you're meeting executive three times a year, the, you know, ultimately it comes out of your, uh, you know, out of you, the hi, how are you? So these are the few, uh, you know, things if you look at, uh, the difference that we continue to execute. And even if it, you know a simple handshake or greeting uh, is something which is supposed to be giving you an impression about you as a person, how firm you are, um, um, you know, handshake is, how often you are making eye contact while discussion with the other person, those are the clear reflection of your confidence, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, uh, I was telling Bibu uh, you know, this morning, I met a CIO of BMO yesterday evening. His uh, name is Antonio Novillo. He comes from a London School of Business and a big fan of, you know, Manchester United. So during our conversation yesterday evening, it was more about Harry Maguire or Ryan Giggs, <laughs> the star players in the Manchester United, and what are the different matches um, is coming up and whether what are his plans, obviously. Obviously, this is a dinner meeting with the, for a business meeting. So we followed the business discussion. But the key over here is if we are in Canada, if we are meeting somebody, we should have a conversation about his interest, about the place where we are in, what is the environment we are discussing. And we cannot have a, you know, when we are in Canada, we have to talk about Toronto Raptors, Blue Jays. Instead of talking about cricket, that okay, India lost the match to New Zealand, and we, you know the other person may not be knowing about the game altogether. So, you know, personally, if you look at when I meet someone in a senior executives, I apart from the LinkedIn profile, many a times I do a psychometric test on him or her to understand the more about the character, whether that individual is a controlling character or he let. He, his team take a decision, etc. This is something we have to do our background before we get into a meeting or a conversation. These are the few important things that normally we do not do in India. And, yeah. and if you look at the communication perspective, the you know the dif behavioral differences 
teamwork, collaboration, how you interact with your peers, how you interact with your subordinates, how transparent you are with people. So, you know, focus is more towards the honesty instead of, you know, false positive attitude. I remember three years back in my team, uh, I just, uh, you know, in 2017 or so, there was a huge customer complaint that our team from India had been reporting on every Friday with the status report saying that, okay, I have, my automation has moved from X percent to Y percent and Y to Z in every weeks. It has been over the last eight, nine, nine months. And they were thinking that, okay, the customer is not looking at, or he's not a techie guy who will not be interested in knowing how much exactly has been done. But it went up to, uh, you know, a uh, situation where the automation reported as 80%. And all of a sudden, the customer realized that if 80% has been done, then why am I paying so much to um, you know, take him? The efforts would have been reduced, okay? And take him continues to charge me the same invoices. So the, when we went back, obviously the you know, com complaint has, uh, we are taking it seriously. When we went back, we saw that actually commission has not been done even up to 30 to 35%. So this this is called work ethics. This is called the transparency with you and your, with your leaders and with your customer. These are the few traits. Is you know because the guy who was reporting, he was thinking, okay, chalta hai, we, is Samahit is going to you know see the actual status, or neither the customer, right? These are the few things which is little different. So obviously we have to take action. That is a different thing, but. It has put all of us into a lot of stress at that point of time. The good factor is if you look at in Canada, people, they encourage to, you know, to say no upfront rather than only saying yes, yes. In India, almost in every meeting you go, people will say yes, yes, but they don't know that they do not have answer. So that is something is there is a cultural different, environmental different people no knows or learns how to say no. And the, you know, the other important thing which I have noticed is, you know, irrespective of your position in an organization, whether you are a developer, tester, lead, or manager, all, all voices are respected and heard if you are part of a team. So these are the few things I think, you know, makes the difference. Yeah, I think, no, thanks, Amit. Uh, um, I think it was a good segue to the next uh, follow-up question I had. You mentioned about the yes sir culture in India. Uh, so can you think of maybe something else which is encouraged in India, but is, uh, or maybe is not encouraged in India, vice versa, and maybe will be welcome in India, uh, welcome in Canada. Um, uh, for example, asking questions to the supervisors, uh, those yeah. kind of stuff. So uh, a critical questioning or uh, drilling down and more probing questions. It's, it's definitely not encouraged in, in India, but here it is appreciated. Uh, absolutely. You're right. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, no, th thanks, Amit. Thank you for that explanation and showing the difference between both the cultures. And evidently, it's a very different culture and we have to adjust to the new life here. Uh, so, Priyanka, um, you have a gold medal in human resources and you are a relatively new immigrant as well. So, and your education puts you in a unique situation to observe and relate to some of the theoretical aspects that you would have read about, say, human or organization behavior, and then how the subjects behave, behave in a social gathering, and whether they're fit for a certain organizational culture or not. Um, so, for example, an uh, extremely flamboyant social butterfly will not be hired maybe for a super traditional accounting firm. So, uh, my question would be, can you paint a broad picture how most of the immigrants from the subcontinent uh, are perceived, like, like what kind of brand they have either knowingly or unknowingly created for themselves? Sure, thank you for the question. Uh, before I even start, I just want to mention that the initiative today, the topic of this webinar is very close to my heart, maybe because I'm from the HR background and it's a pleasure to be sharing my experiences and understanding with you. I hope some of it or any of it comes across as helpful to the audience here. So coming back to your question, Migo, it's a very interesting question. South Asians are the third largest pan-ethnic group in Canada after Europeans and East Asians. When we typically talk about South Asian immigrants, well, you can take us out of Asia, but you cannot take Asia out of us. We are often stereotyped as model minorities with certain expected behavior. For example, 
we have a strong sense of academic achievement. That is why even in the point system or the CRS system of immigration in India, Indian and Chinese people often succeed relatively more because of a substantial post-secondary educational background. We know our basics, or let me just say our technical knowledge quite well. And an interesting Forbes article highlights how Indo-American Canadian children can win spelling bee contests, but the article does not mention that some Indian Canadian immigrant children also struggle to learn fluent English as a second language. Similarly, while Asian Indians in the United States or Canada have among the highest percentage of college degrees, as well as relatively higher income among all ethnic and racial groups, for every South Asian who has a degree with high income, there is another South Asian who struggles to gain job skills and needs to be trained to be gainfully employed. The newer immigrants, on the other hand, brand themselves to be either too eager or too awkward. We Indians, we have a tendency to overwork, work beyond regular hours. Manager ko late night ek email bhej diye, weekend mein ek email bhej diye, hain, lagta hai, hain, bohat efficient dikhata hai. But one very important job skill is also to maintain a healthy work-life balance. In Canada, I have personally seen my manager would want me to complete my tasks within a stipulated time and then enjoy the rest of my day. He does not appreciate overworking unnecessarily. Again, though we might know more than our peers or colleagues, we might not make the cut due to the lack of polishness sometimes. I have seen many of my Indian colleagues who might have a great idea to propose to the table, but are too conscious to speak it out because of lack of confidence or sheer inferiority complex. Ek aur pattern hai, which is worth elucidating, hum cheezo ko na kabhi relearn nahi karna chate. Ye soch ke that we already know them. But in Canada, it's a good thing to take a step back. Canadian employers value people who work hard and are willing to do the extra work and willing to learn and adapt to whatever job they are doing, even if it's not something that's your forte. You must have an open mindset, which also sometimes includes settling for a position that is not at par with your job back in the country, rather than being unemployed for a significant stretch of time. See, when you're an immigrant, you're like a clean slate. So... Every job is like a learning experience because you're entirely in a different demographic. So there's nothing to feel unworthy about a job, you know. However, with immigrants from subcontinent, the observation is often this, that we are known for our technical expertise and knowledge than our behavioral skills, which is a very important gap that needs to be filled. I think that's my take on it. No, no thank you. Actually, I can relate to one of the examples you told, but overworking. I remember when I joined TELUS at about six, seven years back, I was working till about 7, 38, sitting in 25 York in downtown Toronto. And my VP came back, gave a pretty loud thought in the back. Don't you have a life? I'm like, okay, yeah, I do. I do. So um, I can certainly understand. People appreciate that work-life balance and how it's important for you to have a life outside of work as well. Um, my follow-up question to that would be, um, we, we somehow knowingly or knowingly we have been stereotyped and created a brand for ourselves. So, so what can one do to create a, maybe change that brand? I know at a, I, I want you to explain to a high level because I have to pay you tens of thousands to rebrand myself. So <laughs> we'll not go into brand remanagement, but at a high level, what, what we can do so that we can stand out from the rest of the crowd and create a better brand for ourselves. Sure. So this is ever changing and times have changed. Well, thanks, but no thanks to pandemic, there have been unprecedented changes in the Canadian labor market. And Canada is still a long way from returning to its pre-pandemic economy. So the job market competition is at all time high, is on fire. It's no more a cakewalk to bag a sustainable job, let alone a decent one. But there still are success stories, Bibu. Some of them are still getting offered their dream jobs. I personally have received few undeniable offers amidst this raging times of pandemic. Even when I landed here back in the end of 2019, I was the lucky first one amongst all my friends to have received a great job offer within just the first two weeks. So there's every reason to be hopeful, but we have to understand how we can brand ourselves better than the rest what gives one the extra edge than the other. So to understand this, uh, we must know a basic distinction between two concepts. Which is a bigger problem? Is it unemployment or lack of employability? Employability in the simplest form 
means your ability to get employed. The skills and attributes that help you to get a job, remain in the job, and progress in the job. हम अक्सर ये सुनते हैं one of the reasons why Canadian employers reject candidates is lack of relevant Canadian work experience. मेरे दोस्त it's a funny thing. मेरे दोस्त हमेशा मुझसे पूछते हैं if I'm a new immigrant, how on earth shall I have Canadian work experience? Isn't this the lamest logic, Priyanka? But the reality is the employers in Canada do know that if you are a newcomer, you wouldn't have the Canadian work experience. What they really mean with Canadian experience is if you have the knowledge of the work culture that they have in Canada, and if you will be able to fit in the company culture and get along with your new co-workers. Sometimes employers also use the term "you don't have enough Canadian work experience" to subtly say that a) your English wasn't that good, b) you didn't have the right attitude or skills for the job, c) you don't seem to be adaptable or flexible. So, ये सोचने वाली बात है. ब्रांडिंग सिर्फ टेक्निकल नो हाउ और आपके करियर लेंस से नहीं बनता है इट्स ऑल्सो गो टू डू विथ योर पर्सनैलिटी इंजीनियरिंग सो टोटैलिटी पैकेज मैटर करता यू नो सो या आई थिंक दैट्स हाउ इट ब्रिंग्स अ चेंज इट्स मच मोर देन या मच मोर देन आई थिंक द स्किल्स टेक्निकल स्किल्स या समाइट मेंशन सर्वर बिहेवियर पर्सनल ट्रेड्स लाइक एडेप्टेबिलिटी फ्लेक्सिबिलिटी कम्युनिकेशन स्किल्स पंक्चुअलिटी एक्सेट्रा I think you hinted a personal branding of employability, personality re-engineering. Uh, most of these are not technical skills that we learn in schools back home, like coding, business analysis, or UX, UI designing. This, these are not taught to us, and and these are also not taught in any vocational institutions. Um, even when I left India, and I'm not sure if they are they get measured by any standardized test per se. So, so how do you define these subjective skills that we just mentioned about? Sure. So. Uh, as i was mentioning about employability employability can be further divided into two broad categories hard skills and soft skills hard skills are your core technical skills that help you to enter the job like your degree qualification technical competence so on ye aapko sikhaya ja sakta hai through education second is soft skills but before even i get into it i would just like to confess that i have huge problems in calling them soft skills because soft skills sunne mein aisa lagta hai they are too soft to be even discussed about but aisa bilkul nahi hai they are super important aur aage aage hume pata chalega kaise ye itna important hai i would rather call them human skills because they make us better more efficient and more productive and help us to remain and grow in the job and not just get the job these can't be taught ya this can't be taught ya ko seekhna padega through your personal life experiences so these could be combination of people skills social skills communication personality traits attitude social and emotional intelligence quotients and so on some examples uh, dada already has pointed out but i would just like to elaborate some examples could be attitude communication work ethic team work leadership qualities time management decision making conflict resolution critical thinking networking empathy the list goes on i can go on and on and on and on so yeah these are equally important but you are being i'm being had same i don't know maybe for a as a brand manager or maybe a software developer so um, as an hr professional could you maybe explain to me help me understand why are these soft or other human skills important in these jobs Yeah, for sure. So let me give you an example. When choosing between two seemingly equal candidates, organizations are now prioritizing soft skills as the key differentiator. Two candidates, jinka same experience hai, same background hai, same technical skills hai, but choose wohi hoga jiska soft skills strong hai. In fact, let me share some statistics. In LinkedIn's Global Talent Trends report. 92% of talent acquisition professionals reported that soft skills are equally or sometimes more important to hire than hard skills canadian employers in particular place a large importance of soft skills because individuals with the right soft skills may be able to quickly learn the technical skills whereas soft skills are harder to teach because these skills are developed through your life experiences the employers are putting more and more emphasis on human skills that's why we see such a drastic change in the interviewing pattern too which alongside the technical evaluation 
focus is equally or sometimes more on behavioral and psychometric aspects of the job applicants jab mera interview hua tha it was 100% behavior based i was grilled for what nearly an hour but they didn't ask me a single technical question some examples of behavior based questions jo un candidates ko pucha jata hai who apply for more technical oriented positions could be and samainda can elaborate more he would be knowing it more some questions are how you usually develop relationships with your coworkers and supervisors describe a problem you solved in a creative or unique way describe a time you had to deal with someone who was difficult or share a time you needed help or guidance on a project and how you went about asking for it the shift in this paradigm has made possessing human skills critical than ever before mai hr background se hu but right now working in a critical operational role it's not the technical skills i have but the human skills that have helped me to be successful in this entirely different role that i am in so it just says how much important these are no i, I think yeah I, i just falling back yeah, i think i can sort of relate to it now because most of the interviews i've had in the current in the jobs in canada except for my for the first job it was all transferable uh, um, human skills that were questioned uh, and most of those were referrals so no one bothered to ask me whether i can mm. evaluate a contract whether i can negotiate um, it was most yeah it was about leadership about adaptability etc so so thank you for that uh, some of those i haven't forgotten you so let me go back to you yeah. <laughs> so you are responsible and in a, i think you are rather accountable for several techm accounts in financial services sector in canada uh, you have to ensure a successful delivery of the agreed to scopes uh, as well as ensure that the account grows in the future um, and i think uh, while you were chatting i think yesterday or day for yesterday you did, you did mention that you have about 25 to 30 resources from eastern india in your team so um, uh, and I, i think i'm sure if we continue having this conversation maybe the number will increase but still um, but beyond the required it skills or maybe any technical skills that you look for in your organization um, what soft or human skills that you look for while say hiring anyone be it in the resumes or Uh, be it in the interview process or even promoting a candidate uh, i'm sure you must be looking for something beyond the traditional it and technical skills absolutely bebo see uh, you know i personally get engaged when hiring a senior leader whether it's from the business development or you know delivery side i normally i i don't get into the lower level of you know i know evaluating people on the technical skill best right. but when now we do the typical character uh, sticks i look for or i always give preferences to the confidence or assertiveness of a person how he or she comes across as a person in first place when i meet him or her i do remember couple of instances where the candidates were stood out i do you know uh, there's a back uh, in 2017 or so uh, in our in the month of uh, november or december i don't remember exactly but there's an in person interview i was uh, doing in a, in a scotia bank premises i was meeting somebody the guy uh, he came up with two tea mutton coffee in uh, in his hand i was so surprised and obviously he offered me one and he, it was for uh, him and the other one but he was confident all throughout the discussion and the and exhibited the same okay so the choice was you know definitely that okay this guy can meet my as a sales leader role similarly you know a couple of weeks back i was doing a you know interview of somebody from delight so during that discussion he is a senior guy and he used zoom in and zoom out and was jumping on the you know board in the drawing board he started drawing the entire a uh, cibc organization from cio and who was the next and what are the typical characteristics they look for or what are the you know interest they are having so if you look at in we know that we are all in the virtual world when you are at, you know doing a connecting interview how many of us thought that we can elaborate something in the drawing board itself and you know honestly i was so impressed i have ordered the, those cameras for me also for my subsequent meetings so you can take the camera back to your drawing board you know keep uh, you know you can move on your you know all options in that camera that was something which is unique and it was good so that shows the you know guy is very confident and, and he knows what he's talking about okay because in this today's world nobody has the patience and time to hear 
or you know, um, where you have been born, whether it is a normal or a C section, or which city you belong to, or what is your data, but nothing, right? People want to see who you, uh, you as a person, you know, uh, you are. Second, uh, you know, priority goes that what is the attention to details? Because if most of the people in the today's world, you know, they talk about very thousand feet level. But when you get to drill down, you know, any scenario, they themselves explain that they do, uh, many times they do, were not able to go beyond. So that, that, that is something also is required, whether you are putting a, your profile in place, your profile has, you know, do not have any error or any spelling mistake, or you are writing an email or anything. So those are the simple things for that cas uh, you know, I. And the third I would rate is, uh, what is your teamwork? Whether a person exhibiting, yes, I have done, I have done, I have done, I did this X, Y, Z, or he is talking about his team, that how collaborative his team was to, you know, deliver this, or how, you know, um, you know whether he's able to share the credit for his team while in discussion with him, with you. So those are, uh, you know, my few things. Obviously, we look for the adaptability in a role because sometimes we say, okay, you are coming from, you know, uh, insurance, dom or insurance domain, but I'm going to put you in the capital market. What is your thought process? How you will be able to adapt to this sales? What are the few things that you will be taking care of in a day one, day two, day three? So it is trying to, you know, say the person's ability to adapt to a new situation or how good he or she is in the problem solving. If given a chance, I was talking to, you know, uh, somebody uh, that, okay, I do not have a MSA with, uh, you know, with this, this account, you know, uh, TechM does not have. Then how you will be able to uh, get me into the MSA of, uh, with the procurement? So those are the few things, you know, people have to think through and, you know, answer. Similarly, you know, uh, um, I, you know, I personally see as a leadership does not mean that how many people report to you or how many, you know, um, uh, million revenue you are responsible for, but rather your leadership comes to the, uh, you know, forefront when you are having a clear visibility on the gray areas, when you are able to commit, okay, I'm able to commit you know, 15 million revenue for next year, even if I do not have MSA in this bank or in, in that uh, insurance domain. So that, that, that is where the leadership comes and you should able to, you know, see clarity in his thought or her thought, right? And the last thing is, obviously in the discussion, nobody likes in the world, uh, you know, it is beyond your verbal or knitting skills, whether the person is able to do a right eye contact, or you know the you know he's doing a you know a right hand gesture or not no finger pointing to somebody or don't fidget or in, in your discussion whether you are introducing somebody's uh, you know personal life or you are blaming somebody or you know those are the few things that uh, obviously puts uh, you know all of us down in during the interviews those things should be avoided. Absolutely. I think those are really great examples. For example, um, you mentioned about the adaptability of remote work when the, he, he came prepared with the, the zoom in, zoom out cameras that shows preparedness. Uh, yeah. Also, uh, going over the corporate ladder of CIBC, I think from a sales role, that's important to understand what the organization structure is. Uh, and someone who comes and tells you, okay, even though you don't have an MSA with CIBC or any of the XYZ bank, but I'm a man with a plan. I can bring you 15 million. I can do this by doing these steps. So that shows the confidence. Yes. Uh, that's brilliant. But did you end up hiring that person? Of, of course. Makes sense. That's, that's, that makes a difference, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, thank you, Samuel. That's really good. Um, so, KK, I think, yeah. Yeah, why don't you go ahead and ask some? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah just engage. I have a lot of questions. <laughs> makes sense. Yeah, sorry for stealing your show. I'm sorry. I know, like, no, maybe. We are, you know, thinking about like a manager perspective, you know, those kind of things. Let's go back to the, the junior level or something and see like how. So I would like to ask to uh, Ms. Priyanka about that. So, uh, so like, I know like, you know, there are a lot of discussion nowadays about soft skills, this skill, that skill, you know, it's going on a lot of, I know like my parents never have this kind of, never face this kind of things, right? They either go directly, you know, somebody see that, okay, you want to do job, do it, right? No, they get into the job. 
even i guess some of the people over here also they might have felt the same thing i don't they came to canada they might have you know gone to any kind of industry or you know they asked for a you know, profile or maybe they can see them okay you want to work let's come and join and this is your skill set and go ahead but nowadays is more about soft skills and you know other things you know that is what you know you, how you pre- how you are presentable how smart you are that is what the you know whole story coming into right so if if you were to pick some of the most important you know soft skills that you will be looking for a team or maybe you know on a general perspective you know thinking about okay these skills must be possessed by this person or maybe in a hierarchical manner let's say junior level mid junior you know senior and something like manager also so what would be this uh, you know soft skills most important soft skills where you know somebody has to look after it or you know have to work on it to make them perfect so sure. first of all time management being one of the most important soft skills i would just ensure i'm managing my time in this session optimally hence i'm going to discuss the six most important human skills according to me which can help you in different spheres of your life and i'll try to be a bit elaborated here because it is important my first pick is i'll start with the most critical of them that is communication traditionally hum log communication ko verbal or written ke taur se jante the but the equally important modes of communication are gestural which is your body language as samit the rightly pointed and aajkal ke time mein online communication that includes your email etiquette and etiquette for any web based form of communication unarguably you can imagine how important online communication has become in the current scenario of work from home and social distancing verbal ke liye try having small talks or friendly conversation with your friends and colleagues which not only makes people feel at ease with you while building working relationships but helps in honing your verbal communication skills public speaking is a useful skill to master the ability to pre- present yourself illustrates strong confidence and leadership to improve further bahut zaruri hai to learn the local language and jargons that are related to your specific location in canada and your specific industry when you communicate think about how you are addressing others how clear your message is your body language and your tone of voice you must also see how others communicate and take tips and techniques from them to find a style that works for you one practice that i have always follow me apne bachpan ke times ye follow karti abhi bhi karti hu i maintain a little notebook where i note down any new word or interesting phrase i come across i try to understand the meaning and use them whenever i have the right context to be more comfortable with them if you want to improve on your writing skills get in the habit of writing the diary i know very boring very traditional but it improves your writing than nothing else even if you are already great in it there's always a little room for improvement isn't it gestural communication which i was talking about uh, which is your body language is equally important so let me just tell you you might be saying the smartest thing in the room but if you have a body language it will just not connect to improve this aspect observe your canadian colleagues or friends and see how they are presenting themselves one thing that i do is i watch a lot of talk shows i enjoy watching them that really helps me to work on my body language and voice modulation my second pick is enthusiasm and right attitude so students if there are any in this forum today you will not get your dream job right after graduation i mean you might not get and they will probably need to slog through a few entry level positions before moving up the corporate ladder so attitude is everything the department of labor even claims that many employers would rather provide job skills training to an enthusiastic but inexperienced worker than hire someone with perfect qualifications but a less than positive attitude confidence is key you might not speak the perfect english you might not have the best sounding accent you might not know it all but if you have the right attitude you will stand out from the crowd my third point is teamwork in most workplaces being able to well work with your team isn't just appreciated it's necessary needless to say working as a group can be difficult and conflict and tensions can easily arise but usi ko handle karne se aap ek aur soft skill seekhoge which is conflict resolution group projects with friends can help you try on different roles and work with each other to make sure you succeed just like you would have to do in the real world 
When you engage in good teamwork, you show your employer that you are great at collaborating with others. Stepping away from the office is a nice way to be able to connect with them on a personal level. हम लोग इंडिया में करते थे ना बाहर टपड़ी पे चाय पीते थे, which can assist you professionally because you will know their personality a bit more and have the ability to understand how it factors into their work ethic. Fourth, okay, now this requires a lot of importance. Networking. This is key. Most hiring managers would agree that they would rather interview a potential candidate who has been previously recommended by somebody they know or work with, and networking is the best way to receive these recommendations. However, for many, professional networking is an intimidating prospect, especially when you are new to the country. So, start through LinkedIn, build an impressive profile, and connect to people you feel can add value to you. The last job offer I got was out of a LinkedIn connection I developed. Vishwas mano mera, it's not a myth. मैंने सीधा एच आर को इन्वाइट भेजा एंड लेट हिम नो दैट आई कैन कंट्रीब्यूट टू दिस रोल एंड दिस इज हाउ आई कैन कंट्रीब्यूट एंड ही कनेक्टेड विद मी टू सेट अप एन इंटरव्यू फेच रेकमेंडेशन फ्रॉम योर प्रीवियस एम्प्लॉयर्स दैट कैन गिव यू अ स्ट्रॉन्ग रेफरेंशियल बैकग्राउंड स्टूडेंट्स कैन प्रैक्टिस मॉक इंफॉर्मेशनल इंटरव्यूज एंड अदर सोशल सिम्यूलेशन टू गेट कम्फर्टेबल विद नेटवर्किंग my fifth point is leadership and initiative ek example de rahi hu i remember i was still 5 months old in my company and they hire another team member me seedha apne manager ke paas gayi and i asked him if i could train this new girl on things i was confident about he gladly said yes to my surprise when he was evaluating my annual performance the next year he remembered this initiative and gave me great remarks on leadership and initiative parameter so do not shy away from sharing ideas and taking on new initiatives because that way you step out of your comfort zone and pave a way for career advancement you can even offer to be the one in your group who gives the project presentation as a way for you to improve your public speaking skills manager se seedha jao baat karo about your interest and see if there are any opportunities to lead a project or group or even be a mentor to someone else in the workplace who has less experience puchi apne manager se to consider you as an interim supervisor in the event they are out of the office for a meeting or planned vacation if you have any process improvement ideas think about sharing it with your manager and ask for the responsibility of working out the logistics and leading the team sixth is flexibility and adaptability change is the only constant in an ever changing world you must learn to adapt to new ways of doing things in both a new culture and in a new workplace you can't just say we have always done things this way nokia ne bhi yahi kaha tha and we all know what happened next employers want employees who are flexible willing to change and make progress some adaptability traits jisse aap apne manager ko impress kar sakte ho could be by being open where working well with others and following canadian etiquette basics share your ideas but willing to bend your idea to consider alternate solutions listen to other people's ideas and approaches with an open mind don't let surprise assignments changes or last minute tasks stress you out and be willing to learn new skills but ek bahut zaruri point hai which you should remember is never lose your heritage my advice to immigrants and young students is not only to keep in touch with your own heritage but to share it as well take every opportunity to learn and participate in the culture and traditions of others but do not lose out on any opportunity to share what you hold near and dear to you because adaptability doesn't mean forgetting your roots or losing out your individuality mai koshish karti hu indian festivals ke time indian attire mein office jane ka this shows you are deeply rooted and have a mind of your own my colleagues love that i mean they come to know about my culture so yeah these would be my top picks that's good yeah definitely that's a new i did Point actually, like you know, to keep your culture, right? You know, ethics, uh, you know, open and you know, actually, that's a really and you know, six ethics definitely those are still the soft skills or the skills you can say like you know, indirect skills required. That's a you know, definitely you know, beneficial for the people. So one thing I would like to ask you, maybe you know, everybody has that curiosity during the starting of their career, maybe a new student or a fresh pass out or a newcomer or a new immigrant also, right? Though even though they have a lot of experience back at home in India, but they when they come to landed here in Canada, they always have the curiosity to start afresh. Right? So 
uh, what could be your advice like you know because i know i can give you a small example when i started my career in bangalore india uh, from odisha so what happened actually i know like my english was not my communication was not strong but i was technically very strong because i can do coding you know i had lot of you know few words and all but the thing is that whenever i somebody asked me about the question uh, like a generalized questions right what's your hobby and all i always mumble you know i always think about what should i tell <laughs> because it never comes so i always think like something in a back of my mind actually okay i need to ask, you know tell this is the coding this is what the programming because that's my strong area right so as a general perspective on a very general perspective if a student or a newcomer or a new immigrant what could be your advice that they should focus on or you know they should you know polish their skills on what basis you know what kind of areas could be sure okay, okay. so um well you are not an exception i have seen a lot of people struggling with that strong technical knowledge but just can't explain it in the right words so i would divide your question into uh, two parts and answer them so this goes out for the students spending your college years developing hard skills particularly technical skills may seem like a winning strategy for securing post graduate employment but according to employers neglecting soft skills like communication self motivation and flexibility can be a serious miscalculation so few tips that can help is land an internship or two or more because it would help you to learn value soft skills such as dependability professionalism information management and adaptability number 2 could be join the conversation strengthen the skills by taking part in class discussions three is to speak up taking on a campus role that includes probably public speaking such as a student government leader or tour guide is one way to develop the skills taking a speech communication course even if it isn't a required class can also set you apart from the other job applicants number 4 is join a club or maybe an intramural team extracurricular activities including service learning experiences and philanthropic projects that require group endeavor are great ways to develop teamwork and collaboration skills better yet seek a leadership role in a student activity or volunteer to take charge of a of a project fifth is take the initiative demonstrate your management skills by starting your own student initiative it might be a club that reflects one of your interests a project you believe in or a website or money making endeavor sixth is try to be a role model look for roles that include mentorship and high levels of responsibility for example a resident assistant tutor or teaching assistantship seven is try to achieve even outside the classroom demonstrate your time management and multitasking skills by succeeding in the classroom while working part time freelancing or completing volunteer work it's a sure way to impress future hiring managers and my last point but not the least is to up your resume game so hum log kabhi kabhi soft skills ko apne resume mein highlight karna completely ignore kar dete hain and on the other hand highlighting soft skills in our resume can be very very tricky so take inventory of all your work volunteer and academic experiences your part time job may not be in the field you will be entering after graduation but it might teach the value of customer focus one of the most value soft skills across industry segments you may not plan to go into politics anytime soon but your student leadership role proves you have communication and interpersonal skills two of the most sought after skill sets cited by employers choice of words bhi bahut important hote hain yahan pe for example when a job description is looking for multitasking you can highlight time management as one of your skills applicants should refer to themselves as team players when employers are looking for teamwork so yeah those would be my guiding tips to the students now talking about sources like as uh, kk you were mentioning how to develop the soft skill some sources that you can use so we have both paid and unpaid sources available i would talk about the free of charge sources first because that's our favorite <laughs> so podcasts they have guest speakers who provides unique insight plus analysis and content from the host few examples available in the web could be softskills.audio it's a website you can go and visit blog articles the blogosphere is full of how to advice look in particular for in depth guides with research 
थर्ड इज ऑनलाइन वीडियो वॉच वीडियो इन यूट्यूब और वीमियो अगर यहाँ कोई पी आर एस्पिरेंट है एंड आयल्स के लिए प्रिपेयर कर रहा है Then YouTube में जाके वॉच बैंड एट नाइन टेन के स्पीकिंग वीडियोज वेन आई वॉज प्रिपेयरिंग फॉर माई स्पीकिंग टेस्ट फॉर आई एस मैंने सिर्फ ये सारे वीडियोज देखे थे एंड ट्रस्ट मी नाइनटी परसेंट ऑफ द क्वेश्चन आई वॉज एस्ट केम फ्रॉम दिस वीडियोज फॉर इवन मोर डेप्थ यू कैन कंसिडर दिस पेड रिसोर्सेज क्यूरेटेड कॉन्टेंट्स आते हैं ऑनलाइन दीज आर ऑन गोइंग सब्सक्रिप्शन और मेम्बरशिप्स एंड यू विल यूजली गेट ए न्यू टॉपिक एवरी वीक और मंथ फॉर एज लॉन्ग एज यू स्टी अ मेम्बर कुछ एग्जाम्पल्स हो सकते हैं स्किल सॉफ्ट गो स्किल्स अवेलेबल है ऑनलाइन ऑनलाइन कोर्सेज अनलाइक क्यूरेटेड कॉन्टेंट दिस कोर्सेज है स्टार्ट एंड एंड टाइम एग्जाम्पल्स कुड बी लिंक्ड इन लर्निंग है बिज लाइब्रेरी है यू डेमी है आप लोग यूज कर सकते हो लास्ट बट नॉट द लिस्ट इट्स गोन साउंड वेरी बोरिंग बट द सोर्स इज बुक्स पर हैव द ओल्डेस्ट वे टू लर्न अ न्यू स्किल books provide a tremendous amount of research you won't find anywhere else look for more recent publications or even digital titles since business culture and technology etiquette rapidly changes with time the last step is to practice all of this by reaching and repeating for example experiment with new words and phrases each week to improve your vocabulary make sure you trim the practice down to stay interested for example अगर आप एक प्रेजेंटेशन के कंक्लूजन को लेके स्ट्रगल कर रहे हो देन प्रैक्टिस जस्ट द कंक्लूजन नॉट द रेस्ट ऑफ द स्पीच प्रैक्टिस इन अ वे दैट इट इज पर्पसफुल एंड डायरेक्टली रिलेट्स टू योर वीक एरिया फॉर एग्जांपल, इफ यू स्ट्रगल विद स्पीकिंग टू लार्ज ग्रुप्स प्रैक्टिस स्पीकिंग इन स्मॉलर ग्रुप्स रैदर जस्ट रैदर रिहर्सिंग ऑन योर ओन लास्टली गेट सम टू रिव्यू योर स्किल्स एंड प्रोवाइड फीडबैक एज ऑफन एज पॉसिबल मैं एक चीज करती हूँ वेनेवर आई हैव अ मीटिंग विद माई मैनेजर आई ऑलवेज एस्क हेम टू गिव मी लीडरशिप फीडबैक वर्बली राइट आफ्टर अ मीटिंग इंस्टेड ऑफ बाई ई मेल द नेक्स्ट डे आई एम सर्ट इन दिस वुड हेल्प यू टू अचीव योर गोल एंड ब्रिज एनी ह्यूमन स्किल्स गैप for me also first time i am hearing some of the things which can improve the uh, you know skills also easily so one of the good thing is like reading books <laughs> nowadays is <laughs> moving away you know, we are going towards you know, digital medias and over thing but that's still a good you know source to you know, enhance your skills so one of the questions from poyoja mahanti like uh, though uh, uh, all the senior people they know time management is a soft skill or technical skill so she is just curious about you know to know what is the time management it's a soft well, skill or a technical skill is it for me yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay so time management based on the situation could be a soft skill as well as a technical skill so i'll give you an example uh, in our hr uh, uh, world when my manager asks me to submit probably a task or a project within a stipulated time and if i'm managing my time well there it could be a technical skill because because i'm completing my work within the stipulated time time management can also be a soft skill because uh when you are in a fast job environment or in a dynamic job environment you could have 10 things to do at the same day if you're not managing your time well this is a personality trait if you don't know how to manage your time well you just won't be able to do those task all of them so based on the situation time management we can bucket it under hard skills as well as soft skills that's good to know so and, yeah uh, just to add to priyanka she nicely you know covered it up but time management is nothing about only the professional life even if in your day to day life when you get up and till you get to the bed it is about time and how how good you are in keeping your time is something which is instrumental in your career absolutely time. dada i would just like to add something here though we call it time management but you know what in reality it is mind management <laughs> how you train your mind to be able to work out everything that you have in your plate in an organized way so we call it time management but it's basically your mind management absolutely Right. right definitely that's uh, interesting right <laughs> because we always think about time we have problem with time <laughs> actually it's in our mind right how to manage it so i have a few 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 of my uh, you know it is in my back of mind you know about uh, samay prabhu so i know like you no know, we know you know about you and you know many people have you know talked about you also like you know you have you know they say like you no know, good thing about you you have 
created a leadership role over here and many colleagues appreciate that you know so how you can in you know, advise or you know how you are creating that branding for yourself and you know, how you can advise some other people also similar way because in canada i know like your referral or you know a kind of reference from a friend or a colleague is much more important than your your own skill where you cannot you don't need to give a proof right you know that i am doing this or i am able to do it but your personality or from a referral can give that kind of confidence to your employer or or somebody who is going to hire you or maybe some colleague or you know in in our you know family family relatives and all like when you we are new so what kind of advice you can give somebody like you know they can create their own you know personality and own branding of your themselves right see i when you ask me the question obviously i am not going to refer to the hard skill that how good you are yeah, expected to be in java or how good you are going to be in a microservices api those are the things which definitely has to be learned but the most importantly the if you are talking about a leadership role a leader is not expected to come with great ideas always right but we have to create an environment to generate the ideas how good you are with your team how or you know uh, how much freedom you are you have given your free, um, team to think above and beyond okay uh, and most importantly as i said earlier a leader is the one who still able to carve out a path when things are gray in nature when you do not have a line of sight but still you you can you know you can navigate your team through that that's what the leadership and i as a person i always love to contribute there even if the you know if you look at amit or uh, amit nasud uh, you know one of the uh, tech, you know finest sales leader in techm in uh, talent if you look at he is from telecom background and uh, we do not have any commonality because i am from the banking and financial uh, you know perspective but when we give a proposal for a business we sit together and we plan that what could be the lucrative offer to defeat the competition whether in terms of pricing when in, in terms of any other solutions that can make take him stand out uh, you know in the today's world there is not a single dollar comes without a competition so you know we have to respect each other's view we have to respect each other's and there is a lot of learning even if I, when i was having last one and a half year uh, half hour you know i was amazed with the you know input that priyanka has said so sometimes you know we we do not think over it but when you hear yeah these are the important traits that we should have as a leader or as a person or as a professional so those are the important things and secondly as a it forget about our career or as a leader see the most important thing is when i as a human being uh you know i was reading a book recently that speak in a way that others love to listen Le- uh, similarly listen in such a way that others love to speak to you so these are the traits is beyond your professionalism if bibhu is going to give me time to hear my concern that that is what matters to me so that you know i will come to bibhu and share my you know uh, you know um, um, concern and you know seek his input but if bibhu is not a person who is does not have a uh patience or you know hearing uh, you know ability then what happens so most importantly we as a individual uh, professional or as a human being have to have some traits that that will make others ease when you are uh, you are meeting them or they are meeting you that is what the most important factor in a professional life thank you so much bhai um you mentioned amit sodi i have high extremely high regards for amit um, uh, i remember um, I, i my background was in procurement like i started in it in satyam then i moved to procurement and uh, i had several interaction with amit and uh, at one point in time i was thinking okay maybe i should move to sales so um, i called him up we told okay let's meet for drinks and uh, i think he had invited few of other his sales um, teammates and after the meeting he convinced me that instead of working for tech maybe i should start a small company of my own <laughs> which eventually i did because he mentored me well so that actually went out really well yeah, yeah. um and you also mentioned about uh, leadership i remember when i joined satyam maybe 8 9 years back um tech uh, 
uh, the, that one of the taglines was every satyamite is a leader yes, and correct. i'm a fresh grad I, I had no clue what what do you mean by me being a leader i am and i think my first salary was 8848 inr i think which is almost same as um, height of mount everest um, so but at that small graduate fresh graduate what kind of expectation do you have of me being a leader but now retroactively if i'm thinking it's exactly what you just mentioned taking ownership yeah. being accountable mentoring someone like what priyanka did and yeah. those are what I'm actually meant by being a leader not by not having how many people in your team i think that, that summed it really well thank you so much thank you so much um, samit bhai thank uh, you we have a few questions i think let me just open it up uh, from kulamani sahu the question was um, can anyone please enlighten on canadian experience as most of the new immigrants are always being asked for i think priyanka answered it relatively well but i'll priyanka maybe if you want to highlight it again about um, the canadian experience act that everyone asks for most of the employers ask for sure so as i said my friends also complain what is about this canadian work experience i am a new immigrant how on earth should i have canadian work experience so as i said uh, the employers are not dumb they know if you are a newcomer you wouldn't have the relevant canadian work experience and they need immigrants that's why we are here so they need us as much we we need them so we have to shrug this off that oh my god canadian work experience and we cannot pressure ourselves with that but of course when they mean canadian work experience they mean if we understand the work culture over here if we are flexible and adaptable enough enough to be able to work with you know our colleagues who are canadians here and just gel up with the environment in totality of course i mean if you have canadian experience if you are an inland applicant who is applying for pr of course that would that would definitely help you in your career progression but when you are a new immigrant by canadian experience they do not mean canadian experience per se but yes if you are adaptable and flexible enough to be able to gel up in a new working environment in a new demographic altogether so i think that's that that what is work that what it boils boils down to absolutely i think um, most of the interviews this is what i have learned over the years as well um i have actually interviewed my interview viewers um i actually do a background their background check where they studied what they're working on what projects they have worked on and more, i try to question them during the interview as well and it becomes more of a conversation like um samit bhai mentioned about um, he met the cio yesterday of a large bank here and his interests were in manu so yeah i'm sure amit bhai would have, samit bhai would have definitely spoken a lot about manchester united just to build that rapport with him because that's a business deal okay. so and that also goes at canadian experience whether you are able to understand with the other person whether you are able to relate to the other person whether you are able to work in that culture whether they will like talking to you like working with you and technically we may be sound but the canadian experience is more about the human and the soft skills i think that it boils down to that absolutely okay do you have any more questions or uh, uh i would say like no yeah is <laughs> lot of things for today okay I think yeah i think um, going back to time management i wanted to wrap up around this time as well um so i just wanted to add one thing here like you know what bibu you said about you know or what samit babu said about you know you know when you are in uh, rome uh, you know be a roman be a roman we have <laughs> exactly. an example here today of course he is not the direct uh, but he is related we have again i will bring a soban sahu uh if uh, so when you can come up or you know his father in law he got married to uh, you know one odia girl here um and his father in law who passed away a couple of years back is uh, our beloved pratap patnaik musa so is one of the senior one of the founding member of kanosa now i always remember pratap musa used to say how in those days like i'm talking about 30 years or 40 years back as samayit babu used to say you know said sometimes back you know there is no point in talking about uh, to a canadian guy about india new zealand ma- cricket match he doesn't understand correct so what uh, uh, pratap uncle used to do you know he doesn't understand because he came from uh, you know indian background uh, 30 40 years back story or even more than that okay um, so you know during his work hours so he found his colleagues they are talking in terms of you know ice hockey you know baseball this that and all thing and he doesn't understand anything so what he used to do is in you know you used to get two to three breaks 
So one setup break, he will mix with uh, setup people and listen what is the topic of the day. Like, you know, what is the discussion? What kind of game was going on in last week or yesterday or something? And he will try to grasp some of those things. Then what he will do is in next break, he will go to another set of people and he'll start talking about what he heard from the previous one. Okay. Right. So that way, right now, like, you know, what happened is like, you know, the Asian population is in a kind of majority or second or third majority state. So we don't find the difficulties, but 40 years back, think about that. Like it's all white. It's all white. And, you know, when you are a brown color skin coming in, they don't put you in the same group. So having said that, unless you talk in their line, they, they don't, you are not a team member. So Pratap uncle used to listen to this thing from one set of group. Okay, I, eventually he learned those things, but you know, he, uh, you know, in his early days, he get to know about these things, took interest because he wanted to be a team leader. I mean, a team player. So yeah. he used to go to the other team and he used to discuss these things. So then when those people found that, oh, this guy also knows this thing. So they slowly accepted him. Absolutely, absolutely. That, that is key. We have that subconscious bi mm -hmm. bias to work with maybe people you like, and that's very natural. And I think we have to work towards overcoming that bias. So that's, that's fair. Um, any concluding remarks, uh, both from Samit Bhai and Priyanka? Did you enjoy this discussion? Did you learn anything from the discussion or do you have any other feedback from us? Uh, any concluding remarks that you have? Okay, I don't so know if you can start. Yeah, I, I, you know, one thing is while well, a uh, lot of learning, uh, as I said, uh, I definitely, <laughs> it's her, uh, like Priyanka is definitely asset for any organization, even if she's not in that role, but she has got all the right insight for make, you know, to make anybody a right professional. So uh, I have made a few of the notes, if you look at it. Okay, so, uh, you know, uh, that is something is you know definitely a learning for me and also on top of it the only summary is i would uh, like to I, I reiterate it uh this stop looking at the rear mirrors when you are here let us not compare what we used to be in india i had a driver i had made i was doing xyz here these things are not working out you know you cannot continue to grieve about it rather focus on you know aligning with the right environment uh, you know adapted adaptability is the you know key to the success so now you know definitely that is the one of the important parameter uh, i would you know like to uh, state and i would request priyanka maybe to add to that i thoroughly enjoyed the session i mean Luckily, this was something in my 40, but I would definitely like to attend other sessions which are like not my forte and learn from it more. And I'm so happy that I could build connections like Samhaj Dabi, Bhu, KK and everyone. And uh, I hope to be in touch with you all. And to conclude, I would just like to say uh, many hard skills are job specific and change quickly as technology advances. In contrast, soft skills or human skills, as I call it, become a part of who you are and only increase with time and experience. That means the soft skills you develop today can remain your secret job seeking weapon for years to come. If you want to have a job, yes, you can have a lot of them. But if you want to have a career, you must, must build soft skills. Thank you so much. Thank you both. Uh, I'll pass the baton to Amit Bhai right now. Maybe any closing remarks before we close the event? All right. So again, I will just come back to a uh, few things uh, that Samayat Bhai uh, as well as uh, Priyanka said on those things that tells me, you know, one of the uh, issues that we have today is about complaining. Oh, this is not right. That is not right. If I would have had uh, this thing, then I would have definitely did better. So all those things are there. Now, those who know Lee Ayakoka, so one of his sayings, I don't remember exactly, well, I'll try to say, but I'll try to give you the gist of that thing. You know, when you find, you know, in this company, my boss is not, uh, you know, good, my peers are not good, uh, you know, I'm not getting this support, we start complaining. So Lee Ayakokatol is, you know what, if you find, uh, you know, difficulties, if you find, you know, challenges with your current job and you want to quit this company or quit this job and go to somewhere else, 
you will find the same thing again there. It's just in a different name. <laughs> you'll find the same thing again there, just in a different name. Rather, you work out with the current situation because at least you know the things here and you will do better here than going to an unknown place. Now, coming back to like, you know, our program or the sub skills and all things, I know that, you know, it is a, or as Priyanka said, human skill. This is a huge subject. It needs to be, you know, continued, discussed and all things. But point is, this is not only about the job. This is not only about the, this is your life. When you go to a dentist, you go to a grocery store, you go to, you to living in a house, you want to talk to your kids, you want to talk to your family, my parents. If you do not talk nicely, they don't listen to you. Right? They don't listen to you. So it's one way or the other, soft skill is a part of our life on a day-to-day -day basis everywhere, wherever you go. Now question is how we are going to mold ourselves as per the situation, as Priyanka said, this cannot be taught. This is something you got to experience, you got to adopt. So hard skills, you know, you learn it from your school or your colleagues and all things. Now, again, uh, in my employment and all things, so wherever I worked, you know, the hard skills can be trained, like you, know, you can get trained on those things because it's uh, many times it's the same thing you do, uh, you know, a, you know, a little bit, uh, you know, I understand that it's always minor changes, but if you get trained, you will pick up that thing. But then to get trained, you need to have a good understanding with your colleagues or with your manager and all things. So how to do that is something that you need to, you know, work on that. This will, uh, you know, again, take you on a career path, not on job front. Right. Again, many thanks, Samayit Babu. Many thanks, uh, Priyanka. Uh, appreciate both of you giving some time uh, for this thing. Uh, Bibhu as well as uh, KK. Thank you again uh, for uh, coordinating this thing. Uh, all the uh, participants, thank you very much for joining today. I, I know, like, you know, this is just... Uh, uh, our first initiative on this front. We would like to do it. We would like to invite more and more guests and we would, uh, Samayit Babu and Priyanka, if time permits, we will invite you again. Yeah. <laughs> I hope you will. Yeah. Come yes. So, uh, but then, as I said, uh, to start with, we need feedback. We need your interest. Like I can, like, you know, we can take you to the, you know, if you're thirsty, we can give you a glass of water, but drinking is your, you have to drink. We cannot drink for you. So likewise, you have to show interest that yes, uh, this is, uh, you find this program interesting, uh, like you know, you'd like to hear more. We can bring uh, you know, people from our community. We can people from the industry. And I'm sure people love to share their experience. People love to share their experience. People would love to discuss about what they're looking for it. Okay, that's not a problem. But uh, you know, the step has to be taken from our side. Now, what you can do is you can write a feedback or uh, write your interest, uh, you know, at team at canosa.ca. You can, uh, you know, send us a note saying that I'm interested to do more things. Or if you have any specific area of interest, like, you know, if somebody is college pass out, you know, somebody is engineering, doing mechanical engineering, I want to look, I'm looking for some help in mechanical engineering or what kind of uh, scopes are there in mechanical engineering. We will try to find out within our community who is in, uh, in that particular field in a better position or somebody who is on the sales line, suppose somebody is looking or a technical sales line, like, like, you know, contact me, or like, you know, somebody is looking on a supply management, uh, contact Bibu, so, so on and so forth. So having said that, like, you know, we can make subgroups and then we try to, you know, uh, you know, give you some sorts of, you know, help, the help that we never got when we came to this country. And yes. that way we as a community, we will grow, okay? Again, many thanks to all of you. And uh, again, please do write back to us at team at canosa.ca and uh, we take it from there. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank thanks, Priyanka. Thanks, Samitabu. Thank, Thank you. 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 Thank you.